Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. This is the Friday edition, by the way, just in case you're tracking my schedule. This is episode number 771. And the topic today is, do you accept yourself? And the subte- subtext of that is, are you sure? Let's talk. So I'm going to talk about this, as you probably can guess. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I might talk about this stuff. Um, so it's just in the camera there. I am, um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen me before, I've been doing these talks for a while now, so you may have seen these talks before. I am a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, um, which is a powerful book for singles and couples, men and women, for relationship support and creating relationships. And I'm also a best, uh, I've already said that, I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life and business. Basically because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work. It was why I support women so much. It's also what drives my um, daily talks now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And this is a daily thing now. Has been for quite a few, quite a, probably almost two years now. Over 700 broadcasts. So yes, a lot. So today we're episode number, episode number 771. And the topic today again is, are you, do you, sorry, do you accept yourself? Or I should say, are you accepting yourself as a, an ongoing thing? Because it is an ongoing thing. So let's dive, let's dive in. The reason this talk comes up a lot for me is I watch people post things on social media, which of course is the worst place to look for this stuff. And also watch people in, in, in the media, the entertainment you know, media and also the news media. And I watch people who I can tell don't accept themselves. It's not about what they say, it's how they actually act on camera and in person. And this is a thing that is a challenge for you if, for example, just be right, right here, right now, is if you have a um, challenge with doing like videos, if you don't accept yourself, it's gonna be really hard to do. And in fact, if you don't accept yourself, it can be challenging because it's gonna be a second voice running in the back of your head at the same time you're attempting to talk on camera. So if you do live streaming or you do videos for your website, or whatever you're doing, that lack of acceptance can get in the way. So definitely stay tuned if that's one of your challenges because I'm gonna talk about it in a much bigger sense, but that's kind of a upfront in the moment thing that I'm dealing with here. Although I've gotten pretty good at accepting myself, although I tend to adjust myself on camera just to make sure that my shirt looks straight, that sort of stuff. But I want to speak to more of a deeper context for this because for many people, judging themselves is the way of life. And I'm not saying that necessarily judgment is the opposite of acceptance, but it certainly ranks up as being one of the major indicators that you're not accepting yourself if you're laying judgments on yourself. So if you're going through your day and you do something wrong, in quotes, and you judge yourself for it, that's not accepting yourself. If you are responding to somebody's comments or communication to you, where you start having doubt about your response, that's not accepting yourself. If you are, I actually had had a conversation with somebody yesterday where I responded to something they posted and they came back at me with a different response that initially was like, oh shit. And I was like, hang on a second. This is the big piece, by the way. It's their, that's their response, not my reaction. And I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment because that's one of the biggest um, shifts that can change your whole awareness about how life is. So a couple of other, a couple of other what ifs or if scenarios. If you find yourself um, having any sense of regret about things you've done or things that you're doing right now, you're not accepting yourself. It's kind of like um, ways to know you're a redneck. <laughs> These are ways to know that you're not accepting yourself. A little bit less, a little bit less funny, but certainly more valuable, I suspect. So, um, no, I'm not going to do. I'm, I was going to do the thing like if you're not accepting yourself. Or you, the way to know you're not accepting yourself is if you do this, this, or this. Like, that doesn't work. So I'll do it the way I was doing it because that's more accurate. Um, if you judge the... Oh, this, this is a big one, by the way. If you don't like the way you look in a mirror, if you judge the way you appear in a mirror, if you judge the way your clothes fit you in the mirror, if you judge the way you feel in the clothes you're wearing when you're going through your day, all of that means you're not accepting yourself. And this is the thing that a lot of people are dealing with nowadays because there's a lot of imagery, literally, in the media, in social media especially, with all the selfies and everything else, that appearances are more important than anything else. And that is bullshit. Let me be clear about that. Being attached to appearance more than content 
is absolutely insane and crappy perspective. So that's my agenda on that one. Um, <laughs> some other things to deal with. If you are judging where you are in your life right now from where you think you should be, that's not accepting yourself either. I mean, these things are pretty obvious, I imagine. But some of you may be, some, you may be thinking about one, two, seventeen of these things, and realizing, oh shit! Don't worry, I've got some answers, so I'll get to that in a moment. So, if, for example, you're thinking of a place you wish you were in better shape than you've been in, because you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, you know, accepting yourself. If you um, judge your bank account, is another big one. You judge what's in there and what's not in there, then you're not accepting yourself. If you're looking at your spouse and having issues with the way that you feel about them, you may not be accepting yourself. I'm going to leave that one on, the, on a either or because you can go either way on that one. So looking in the mirror, physical health, bank accounts, the job you have or don't have, the um, for the spiritual people, the lack of meditation could be a place where you judge yourself and not doing what you should be doing and quote should be doing, then you're not accepting yourself. So these are all different things I'm talking about to cover an array of areas in our lives that we may not realize that we are actually judging ourselves on. Because again, judgment is one of those major pieces that indicates you're not accepting yourself. Because all of that stuff I'm talking about, you could be accepting yourself regardless. Because if, you are, if your bank account isn't where you want it to be, that's just data points. If, you don't look like, if, if the way you look in the mirror isn't perfect, thank you, Sarah. Nice to see you in Marukas, by the way, live this time. Um, it, is a, it is an important conversation because it's fundamental for people's self-esteem and I was going to say self-worth, but that's a different conversation which I'll bring in at the back end because I've talked about that before. So if you look in the mirror and the way you look in the mirror isn't matching the front cover of a glossy magazine, that's a data point. That's not a reason to judge. But we've been trained by our culture to use ourselves, excuse me, excuse me to compare ourselves to what's out in the world as good or bad. And so when we look at ourselves in the mirror or in our bank accounts or on the computer or on our social media profiles or the number of likes we get on our videos, I've had that one myself. <laughs> um, yes, I'll, mm, mm, I'll get to that one. Then there's a, a, an opportunity, I was going to say an excuse, but an opportunity to punish ourselves for it. And that's an unnecessary burden we put on ourselves. Accepting ourselves, frankly, should be the first thing we learn in life because our life experience, our life's journey will have some um, sharp turns and, and detours along the way, but who we are is okay. I'm going to, to, bring, I'm going to bring in the self-worth piece again because this self-worth piece is critical. I've talked about this recently in one of my talks about how who we are as, it's like you put your hand over your heart and you feel it beating then absolutely, absolutely, you are worthy. Your fact you're being here, the fact you can watch this, means you're worthy. Not saying, <laughs> let, me, let me qualify that. I don't mean you're watching me makes you worthy. I'm not going to put myself on a pedestal that way. That's a joke. But what I'm saying is, though, if you actually are experiencing life, if you're breathing, if you're functional, if you're aware of life, then you're worthy. Because worthiness is a, a fact of birth. I'll put it that way. I've talked about before how, how my, my understanding is with spiritual beings have a human experience. And coming from that spiritual place, worth is who we are because worth is not something we can change. So that, that feeling of being undeserving or unworthy of stuff is a mental human construct we add on top of our true value, which is worthy. So being worthy is automatic. So then when we start judging and not accepting ourselves, we fall into this trap that somehow we're not okay. And frankly, it doesn't matter what is going on in your life. You are already okay. So the question is going to be, how do you get from that place of upset, distress, and judgment to the place of acceptance and okayness of knowing you're worthy? Because for some people, that's a quick step. For some people, it's a five-mile hike, and I understand that. I've certainly had my own experience with that one. Um, one thing I'm aware of, just to speak, just to the thing I just flashed on a couple of seconds ago about my own thing about the number of likes and and comments and views again on my Facebook Lives, I have watched that and become, after doing 771 of these now, I have become rather immune to it at times. <laughs> but I'm still dealing with that myself because, frankly, for me, it's not so much about my, it's nothing to do with my talks. What it is, is, it feeling, is my thing about marketing. 
my, con my concern is there are messages I put out that I know there are thousands upon thousands of people who would va get benefit from. Not saying I'm special, but there are people out there who don't necessarily have the, the chance, the opportunity to learn things in their own lives and maybe this message will help them. So my, my growing edge is to accept the fact that's what it is, because it is acceptance of that. I can't control it, I can't make it happen, it is what is. So my point is about this teaching that I'm giving you here, really, is that we have lots of data or data points in our lives that reflect back to us things. That's why there's traffic lights, why police stop cars, why the IRS does things, well, that's the whole of, no, I'm not going down that path. Um, why a bank account may have some money in it. They're just data points. They're reflections back of what's happening. What we choose to do with that is where we have a choice. If we judge ourselves because something isn't the way we think it should be, it's all about that. Because we may think, that, well, our parents thought, told us that, or our partner said that it should be different, and so I'm judging myself because they didn't do that. It's like, drop that. It's not real. And I'll get to a way of getting rid of that too, by the way. What happens, happens. Data, data is data in the sense of, you know, the material world we live in is simply reminding us of things. It doesn't judge. People do. But the environment we're in doesn't judge us. We put judgment on it based upon what we think it should be or think it should be different from what it is. And that's a trap. The only thing I believe, I'm just checking if that's true or not before I say it, when we look at our lives and we're not where we want to be, the only thing that should be is a reminder that we need to keep focusing where we want to go. There's no judgment about it because we say, well, I, I should have had that by now. Maybe, maybe not. Again, it's a data point. What we do with it, though, is where we have power and we have choice. Because for me, frankly, I am passionate about this learning that it's okay to be human. Spiritual beings have a human experience. But being human in the sense that we can be humble. And having humility allows us to grow. But having humility means we can move forward. It's when we have an attachment to a position where we have an ego attachment, where we start to judge ourselves for not having it. 90% of those judgments come from the ego perspective where it's either we're judging our ego or, or ego is judging us. Because we are sitting in a place where we're going, but it should be different. I should have this by now. So see all the shoulds? Should is one of those words is a big indicator where you're not accepting yourself. And it's, one of the, it's the fact that when we start to listen to our own voice in here, our own thought process, our own reminders, we start to realize how much we are accepting ourselves or we're not. And all of us have a reference point on that. So my, my um, sorry, I'm just seeing, I'm seeing a split, which I want to go with on that part. This part. Okay, so some things I'm gonna talk about here is some ways you can change that. So one of them, again, is being aware. It's always one of the fundamental st steps of this work is to become aware of where you are and where you're going. One of the biggest challenges we face is we, no, it's not a challenge. One of the biggest habits we fall into, that's more accurate, is we forget to stop and watch. It's like smelling the roses on the journey. It's kind of like we need to stop and go, is this accurate? Because we may go down a path where we start to judge because something happened. Again, data point, and we then gave emotional content to it. That causes us to become committed to a path we don't want to go down. So having the chance to step back and to look at what we've done or what we're doing or where we are and say, okay, so is this what I really want? Does this match? Is this okay? And if something's amiss, you can make a change. But the challenge again is that we think that it's the only way to do something and we end up being in this um, downward spiral of, blame, of self blame, judgment, recrimination and upset. None of which is accepting. Yes, you can accept yourself for being where you're being in a place you don't want to be in. When we start letting judgments on top of that, that's no longer acceptance. So here's the thing. I'm going to bring out the F word. <laughs> one of the tools I've learned over the years, which is one of the ones I've been challenged with a lot of times too, is learning how to forgive. Because judgment, the antidote to judgment is compassion and forgiveness. Because judgments don't just go away because you don't judge anymore. If you put them in, they stay in. It's almost like putting, putting thorns or, or, or arrows into yourself. They'll hurt. They may go numb, but they'll still hurt. So to look back at those judgments as best you can and to apply compassion and forgiveness like, a, like a, um, an antiseptic or, or, a, or a salve to those wounds will allow yourself to heal. 
It isn't in the mental process, by the way. I talked about this before as well. Forgiveness is a powerful tool because it's not a mental process. I've done forgiveness mentally so many times, it has no impact. I know from experience. But when I move into the feeling level, which is why it's compassion-based, and it's connected to my heart, then forgiveness has um, impact and has, has greater effects. And the thing about forgiveness is, and this is the funny part, is that forgiveness doesn't always work the first time. And one of the challenges that people face, and I've been here myself, so I'm speaking for myself, maybe I'm the only person done this, is that when it didn't get forgiveness didn't work the first time, I judge what didn't work. So now I've reinforced the judgment with more judgment. Not a very smart move. So forgiveness is a, th is a tool you can apply multiple times on the same judgments if you're feeling. The thing about forgiveness is that it's something you apply where you feel the judgment, where you feel the wound, where you feel the trap of um, or the lack of acceptance because when you accept yourself there's no judgment when you judge yourself as bad wrong different worse than less than any of that sort of stuff that's where the forgiveness is applicable and I have a couple of um, couple of things I recommend one of the things about forgiveness um, I'm gonna say this one first but it's gonna be different so Colin Tipping Colin Tipping has a book out called radical forgiveness he actually has a second book out called radical self-forgiveness and there's a free worksheet on his site. I've also got it on my site as well. It's a free worksheet that lets you work through the steps of forgiveness. Personally, that worksheet on its own doesn't work. What I'm saying is because, as I said earlier, forgiveness comes from a place of compassion and a place of, of uh, feeling level of forgiveness, releasing, basically. Because forgiveness is the releasing of the judgments. It's like taking the hooks out and freeing yourself up. Colin's book doesn't go into great detail about that. And I think if you do the worksheet with the con consciousness of feeling level forgiveness, then it works. I also have a, um, a, work sh a booklet rather, or, a, or a, ha a handout that I provide that I got from my master's program in spiritual psychology at University of Santa Monica. That has a forgiveness process too, and I've written my own version of that. It's in, it's in a couple of my programs, and I distilled it into a worksheet. So if you want one of those, message me. In fact, I'll put a link in the comments for a contact form so you can reach out to me and let me know you want those forgiveness things and I'll send them to you by email, um, the PDFs. So forgiveness is a powerful tool. It's a deceptively powerful tool because most people think, oh yeah, you just, you just do like seven Hail Marys or whatever it is. Sorry, I'm Jewish, I don't know the Catholic faith. But, <laughs> but the thing about forgiveness is it's not the traditional religious values. You know, I know that in the Catholic faith and in my faith, in the Jewish faith, the Jewish guilt and the Catholic guilt are very synonymous. However, forgiveness, though, is not the same in the way it's practiced in the faith. In forgiveness, for me, it's from an actual internal place. So, well, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, well, yeah I'll, um, I'll put the contact form in the comments after I sign off. So you can basically send me a message by, so I can get your email address and I'll send it to you. Absolutely. Um, and then we also wanted, of course, just go to my web, just when I sign off, I'll put the link in the contact. I'll put the link in the comments so you can then click on the contact form. Okay, rewind a second. So forgiveness again. When you do forgiveness, that is heart centered. That is in your um, own space, not religious, not spiritual, but emotional based. Is when transformation happens. The shift from judgment to forgiveness. Sorry, the shift from judgment to acceptance. That's better. Shift from judgment to acceptance oftentimes go through, through the emotional content of love, which forgiveness is a form of love, as well as compassion, because compassion and forgiveness together is an essential ingredient of basically being unconditional, to be loving, and to be appreciating, accepting what's happening. That's moving to acceptance. So to move into that place of really getting who you are and loving who you are, to be remember, key thing, remember the old worthy, because you never were not worthy, you've always been worthy, is to really move through the place of forgiveness. It's a potent, simple, elegant, and functional way to get back from the upset, hurt feelings, and resentment, or judgment, into the place of acceptance, of peace, and remembering who you really are as worthy. This is not the simple piece at work in some ways. It's transformational, and it's so simple in some ways when you just simply do it. But for most of us, we just use excuses not to. Or is that just me? I don't think there's anything else on this. Um, as you may have guessed, I'm kind of passionate about this. I will also, I'll also put a link in the comments for my self-love practice because that's something that will help you with this reminder because when you start accepting yourself, 
adding self-love to that will reinforce it and give you a much more um, substantial basis to build your life upon. And I am biased, yes. So I'll put that link in the comments as well. Um, because it's, it's applicable. It will help you get where you want to go. And there'll be one more link in the comments, which is a way to contact me if you want to have a clarity conversation. Because frankly, for many of us, it helps to have somebody else's ear to listen and to support and guide. So the complimentary clarity conversation, which is for women only, because I just work with women on this part, I'll put a link in the comments for that. There'll be a little chat we can have. And you can check that out as well. Um, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, etc., please put them below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. And again, I'll put the link so you can reach out to me if you want to get more help. Um, and a quick link information thing. This is my daily broadcast. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, I do them every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. This weekend, I think I'm reading my time. We'll see. If it, if it changes, I'll announce it on Facebook anyway. Um, this is every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Personal page is Barry Selby. My business page where the replays go is barryselby.author. And also put them onto YouTube because you're always going to have a backup. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where you can go through and search for all my broadcasts and find something that would be relevant to you. All 771, including this one. Um, I think that's about it. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow. If you have any questions, thoughts, you want to reach out for me over social media, you can do that as well. I'm here to help, as you may have guessed. And I'm here to make sure that you remember who you are, that you are worthy, and that you are accepting yourself. It takes a little bit of work, but we can all have that. I appreciate you watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Um, please take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.